Apple. You only have to say that name online and a wild discussion starts. Many see that topic very black and white. But I will tell you today why I bought a MacBook, although I have a really powerful PC behind me and I was on the anti-Mac side before. So before you start arguing down in the comments and getting pissed off, I advise you to watch this video till the end. If you then still have something you want to share, leave it down in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing from you what you are thinking about this topic. So this journey all started when Linus from Linus Tech Tip made a video about mobile video editing. Then Jonathan from TLD followed up with a video about editing on a 12-inch MacBook. A little while later, Dimitri from Hardware Canucks made the switch from a Windows PC to a MacBook Pro for editing in Final Cut Pro. This then made me wondering how much better the optimization on Mac really is. I was also making some adjustments to my workflow at the time by converting the footage to Cineform first for a smoother playback in Premiere. Now, in Final Cut, you don't need to do that. Even on a 12-inch MacBook, which is really underpowered, you can play back 4K footage, no problem. So after some looking around, doing research and watching lots of videos, I finally got a good deal on a 12-inch MacBook. I paid only around 900 quids for it, and there was a first-party USB-C adapter and a carrying case included. When I got it, it turned out that it just has been opened and not even used. So I think I got a really good deal on it. So when I installed everything and started playing around with it, I was really impressed about what this little guy can do. Just to recap really quick. This machine has a 1.1 GHz dual core processor and Intel integrated graphics. So nothing spectacular. But opening programs doing basic stuff and even doing things like photoshopping went just without problem. Everything was quick and snappy. You wouldn't expect that from a Windows machine with those specs. So then it was time to test the video editing capabilities. For that I installed a trial version of Final Cut Pro. And I got myself some footage I had to cut. The first video I cut in Final Cut was the $1000 gaming PC. Of course I first watched some videos about Final Cut Pro because it is much different than Premiere. But surprisingly I got the hang of it really quickly. And I have to give props to Apple there for making the software really intuitive but still having lots of features. So I ended up with about a three and a half minute video and then I went to exporting. I was really curious about how long it would take. To make the test fair, I turned off the background rendering where Final Cut renders the video in the background while you're working. But still, it managed to render the video in just over two minutes. This is less than the duration of the videos. Even with my really powerful X99 build behind me, in Premiere Pro my exporting takes a lot longer than that. So this short amount of exporting time on a really underpowered machine is very impressive. This then made me wondering how this MacBook would handle Premiere Pro. And you don't really have to expect much there. In Premiere Pro you really start noticing the underpowered. You don't have a real GPU and the processor isn't really something good. So Editing in Premiere Pro on the 12-inch MacBook is just not happening. You would at least have to have the 2016 model with the top-end specs, but then it would still be pretty on the limit. If you want to edit in Premiere Pro because you like Premiere Pro better, you would have to go to a MacBook Pro at least. 
but video editing is not the only thing you can do on a really portable laptop. For example, I wrote the script for this video on my MacBook while being outside in the sun and enjoying a beautiful day. I wasn't able to do that with my previous laptop because it was big and bulky and really really heavy. Of course you can now say that there are lots of Windows laptops in the similar size and you can do script writing on them as well. But you can't take them on an airplane and edit video on them fluidly. That's a really plus to this MacBook. So now it is conclusion time again. Now you might not be expecting a conclusion like this from me. And I wouldn't have been two months ago. But I have to say I really like this MacBook. It is really really portable, it is just a bit heavier than an iPad and if you have it in your backpack you don't really notice it. And still you have a powerful enough notebook that you can do your basic photo editing and even some video editing in Final Cut Pro. But if you are from Windows like me but you don't want to change your editing program when you're on the go, the 12 inch MacBook isn't for you. You would have to go to a better thing. And also if you have tried the OS X operating system and you just can't cope with it, then sure as hell go with a Windows machine. But I don't mind the Apple operating system as long as I don't have to use it as my main driver. And so I'm fine with it. Now you might say the Apple MacBook is overpriced. And I would have to say yes and no. You can't really compare the pricing of such a portable device. And if you look at Windows devices that are as portable as the MacBook, they are in the pretty similar price bracket. But that doesn't mean that it would hurt if Apple would cut a few hundred dollars on the MacBook. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below and consider subscribing as well. If you now have something you want to share with me, then please leave a comment down below. I'm happy to read it. So that's it. Thanks for watching and until next time.